Okay, right now we have our basic files and our basic folder. Let's look at um, how our database looks like. First, first of all, we need to connect. We need to connect our user, uh, our Laravel installation to a database that is resident in PHP My Admin. So first of all, I have to go to my browser, open a new tab, and tap localhost slash PHP My Admin. Hit enter. And we're going to see something like um, da, 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 bra, then PHP my admin will pull up. Now, if your PHP my admin doesn't pull up, then it's likely that there is a problem with your installation. For instance, maybe your WAMP server is not running. WAMP or XAMPP server, make sure that it is running. Okay. And uh, once it's running and it's green, like if it's WAMP server, it has to be green. If it's ZAMP server, you're going to see it on the screen or Laragon, whatever you're using, make sure that your server is running and uh, uh, it's running uh, the, what you need it to run. So now, if it's running, your installation should come with root as the username and empty as password, unless you have changed the password, which not many people ever do. Okay, so root and empty as password. Make sure it's left on MySQL. Otherwise, you have MariaDB. I wouldn't use MariaDB. I'll stick to my SQL because that's what Laravel comes with by default. I don't want to go into configuring it to use MariaDB and stuff like that. It's not as important as we want. Okay, so we're good. Now, um, we have our database. You could have yours. Uh, there are basic tables like one, two, three, four tables you're going to see. Uh, I created these two don't ever delete any of them so there is databases you click on databases now we're going to have to create a database and i'm going to call it uh, laravel jobs so laravel dash jobs okay don't set any other thing just click uh, create and boom laravel jobs is created now we have to go back to our laravel app and um, somewhere on it click on the env file so first of all i have to minimize this so i'll click this tiny little arrow here okay and then i can drag this down so i want you to be seeing the full folder so here on the root folder i click on the env file we're back to that our uh, good old friend the env now here as you can see what is your it's asking us what is your database as you can see it sets our database to my sql by default now if you select MariaDB, then you have to set MariaDB here well, like I said, it's irrelevant to us uh, for this course. Just leave it at the default. The database host is at localhost. These are the ports. We don't need all this. But the database name, what is the database name? We created a database called Laravel-jobs. And we're good. With, uh, the login is root with an empty password. Okay, so control S to save. And we're good. Then we go to here. Um, so now, let's refresh first. Uh, Laravel installation uh, refresh so now what happened is that our Laravel app has now been linked to our database so to test this let us run a migration so what is a migration when you run a migration from the command prompt okay you know in Laravel you don't create your database you don't create your database tables like this if you're if you are coding normal php normally if you want you have to come here and uh, start creating tables you click on create table enter the table name enter the fields and manually you don't do that in laravel in laravel you start from inside laravel in the migrations folder the database under migrations this is where you create the files and when you run migration in your command prompt, Laravel will go to your database and create these tables with the fields. So for instance, we have this table called users, okay, that has all this. And we have password resets table and the Laravel three jobs table. Cool. Now what we can do is just to come to command prompt and run PHP artisan migrate. Chill and hit enter. And Laravel will take those three tables go to our database because we've told it where our database is and then install it now more often than not you're going to get an error the first time you run this because um, the error will tell you something look at what it's saying syntax error or asset violation 1071 of specified key was too long laravel almost always gives you this the first time so we're going to set something up all right so let's go 
here to sort it out you have to go to app folder and go to i think it's providers app service provider here we're going to give laravel an instruction so but to get the instruction let's just copy the error the first line look at the line i copied i copied 1071 specified key was too long in laravel and i'll go to my browser go to google and type it paste search the first result is usually from laravel as you can see laravel news and as you can see this error has been from the, the days of 5.4 so to resolve it we scroll to the bottom see the resolution first of all we need to import this into a folder called apps app service provider.php that's the file we have already opened it so we copy this first line copy then look at it in app providers app service provider so the first line we'll put it at the top here paste so we're importing schema all right click save Control s now we go back to our browser and copy this default string length 191 we're supposed to put it inside the boot folder so we, there's a boot folder here okay so we hit enter Control v save and we good everything should work well now so if we come here okay if we come here and run that command again so to run it again i have to just click the um up arrow up cursor key on my keyboard up cursor key shows me the last command i ran i'll click enter and it's going to run the command again this time around we might have an error and the error might have changed look let's see what change in the error base table or view already exists the reason it is saying this is that it's trying to create take from my migrations go to our database and create the table but when it gets there it realizes that the table already exists because the first command we ran actually created some of the tables so if we come to our database for instance and uh, click on Laravel jobs we'll see that it's created two out of three tables that it was scheduled to create before failing all right so what we can do is to clear these tables so I'll just do highlight highlight select this and uh, drop yes i'll click here and the table we don't have any tables again in our database so we can come here and uh, run up arrow enter so it has successfully created the tables now another option you can have because most times you're building your laravel app you might need to run migrations a number of times okay uh, another option to do that is you run php artisan uh, migrate then you type fresh okay migrate fresh fresh means that if it gets to database a uh, uh, fresh or refresh okay and of these two depending on the laravel version so refresh if it gets to the database and see that the table already exists it will first of all delete that table before creating the new one all right so instead of going to your database to manually create all those things you can run the command directly so let's go to our database and see what was created if we come here and i will click on laravel just to refresh our database you see that it has one two three four tables has already been created okay so uh if you click on any of the tables for instance if you click on structure we can compare what it created to what was in the uh, migrations file you see there's id name email email verify that password remember token created that and updated that so if you come here um, to our database uh, folder create users you'll see that it has id name email verify that password remember token remember token then you have these two fields these two fields are automatically created by the timestamp so because every time you put a record in the database it just makes sense that you time the record when did that record when did you create that record all right so if users are signing up in our database we need to know when each user signed up that is what the created that uh, uh, field does for us so laravel automatically creates creates those fields for you if you include this now there is also another field that is important to know and that is the um the um deleted at field it's called soft delete so if i control 
C, Ctrl V. I duplicated this line. That's how you du duplicate lines in VS Code. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Then you can type soft delete. You see? Soft delete. I'll explain what soft delete does. Soft delete is in plural. You should note that. It's in plural. Soft delete creates an extra field called deleted underscore at. The concept behind soft delete in software development is that when you build the application that users use, if they delete anything, maybe they delete a comment they put on your website or delete um, their profile or delete anything, that thing doesn't actually leave the database. Your database just marks it as deleted and the user can no longer see it and no other user can see it. But if you go log into your database and look, you can actually see that there was a record there that is now marked as deleted. So it's different from completely deleting from your database. So most modern web developers and uh, software developers always have that. All right. So if you ever send, put anything online, that thing never actually goes. It stays forever. Okay, good. So all, every time you're creating a migration table and you're working with InfiOM, you need to put soft delete. Otherwise, InfiOM will be throwing errors. So InfiOM expects you, by default, to have a soft delete field. All right? Good. So see you in the next video.